guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought and on today's episode, we're putting a four inch lift kit in my brother's Ford Ranger, also known as the Bought Not Built truck. What? Come on, mate, it's ARB spec. So why have I decided to do this video? Now, you've seen heaps of my car before, live axle patrol, but what's really popular these days are dual cabs with IFS suspension. That's so it's Ford Rangers, your Hiluxes, your Amarox, your D-Maxes, all of those. So I'm gonna put this together because my brother wanted to put a four inch kit in his four wheel drive now. He's taken this thing to ARB, to TJM, all those places to get them to put stuff in, but he wanted to go with Superior Kit. Now they're all the way in Queensland, so what they did is sent the kit over and trusty me, he's going to install it. So I thought I'd record it so you guys can um, understand what's involved. And if you've got an IFS vehicle and you want to do your own lift kit, you can see what it takes and um, see whether you can do it or not. So pretty much to get things started, we'll just get all four wheels off of it and see what we're dealing with. Um, this is quite overloaded. There's a lot of stuff on this um, Ranger. So putting this kit in will help uh, handle that weight and will also give it more clearance off road. I'll show you what we've got to work with though. For a start, laid out the kit here. So what he's gone for is basically, this is a full kit off Superior. So uh, I think it's, it's one, one specific part number and what Superior have done is put a kit together that gives you everything you need to do this lift. We've got the leaf springs on the rear and then the coils on the front. Now there's the coil over and also your upgraded A-arms is the main thing. And the shocks he's gone, these are actually Superior's um, branded shocks now. I'm pretty impressed with how these came out because I've been told that they are adjustable remote reservoir, which is good in itself, but they've also got a larger bore. So I think this is 25 mil bore, which is similar to my King's. So I think these are sort of slightly better than the Fox shocks, but not as good as the King's. So they're sort of in that price range where you can afford to buy them if you could get, you know, Foxies, but you know, they're not gonna cost an arm and a leg like the King's do, but ride just as good. We've got all the wheels off now, we're just starting to work on the front ends. I've disconnected the ABS lines and the brake line here. Uh, now I'm just looking at pulling off the upper control arm, so I've undone the ball joint on the outer side, and now I'm just going to undo the inner bolts where this whole upper control arm can come off. Then it gives me access to the strut tower here, which I can actually pull out the strut and the shock itself so we can put the new ones in. The next thing after that is the actual diff drop. Now I've gone ahead and pulled out the drive shaft, now I want to make sure that I marked uh, a line on the actual diff and the drive shaft so it goes back on the same way because sometimes these actually have a balance point on them and there were a couple of little weights on the outside there which I noticed so if you want to avoid vibrations down the track you make sure you put that drive shaft back on the way it came off. Right, looking at the strut tower now, so basically this is a combination of shock and spring for an IFS vehicle. We're actually going to reuse this tower. Now Zach had a um, spacer on here before, that was that blue thing you saw, you may have noticed when it was coming off. I pulled that off because normally a standard one wouldn't have that, that's just a cheating way to get a quick lift. Here goes nothing, you might want to get this on camera. <laughs> Whoa! Bit of pressure there. Not too bad, the kickback on this isn't, isn't too bad because it's stock spring. I then headed to my friends down at Malaga Suspensions to marry the spring and the shock together. This is a step that you need the correct tools to do it properly and safely. Okay, now while Zach's gone to the shop to get those strut towers put together, I'm gonna to go back and look at this diff drop kit. Now what I've done so far is obviously we've got the drive shaft off earlier. Now there's two bolts at the top here. Pretty much you wanna undo every mount that holds the bolt in place. So I've got a jack. This is just the jack out of the back of the car and a ladder here to hold the weight of the diff up. I've taken the two bolts out of the top. There's also a mount at the front that comes off and also the plate for that mount you remove as well. And then there's a one just here above me, so it's at the rear on the driver's side. So I've undone the bolt on the top of that because you actually need to come in 
and cut this mount off. Once you're happy with the fitment, put some paint over it to avoid rust in the future and then uh, you can start mounting the whole thing back together. The last thing to do is put that spacer in the drive shaft there, nip everything up, use some Loctite as well and there's your diff drop done. Ah! Alright now we're just lowering it down because um, well we've got the diff in and so all we want to do is put a jack underneath these lower A-arms so we can get the upper control arm ball joint into this. Because the spring's in there now, it's trying to force it down. I don't have enough muscle to lift it up myself. So we're going to use the jack to pull this up, get that ball joint in, and we'd be one step closer. Oh, oh my God! Whoa! <laughs> Grab the camera. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I forgot about that. Oh, no. Took the spare wheel out, mate. Okay, now it's time to start looking at the back end. We've sorted out the front with the rear. This has got leafs on it, so it doesn't have coils like the front does. But just want to point something out that this is part of the reason why we're going to upgrade the suspension on here. What Zach's done is put a shitload of weight in the back of this thing, and he's still got the stock springs. And that's actually, when this thing's on the ground, I notice these springs come all the way up and are almost inverted, and it's actually bent this bottom leaf here. You can notice that it's kind of facing the wrong way. Normally, these all follow the same sort of angle as the top spring. So, we're actually going to change this whole leaf pack out. So I've already assembled one of the leaves here. Pretty much the only thing that I would want to mention on this is all the bushes I've already put into the leaf pack. You just want to use some grease because um, on all the bolts that are supplied, they've actually got a little nipple on the end and you pack them with grease and squirt them out and that lubricates the inside. But the outer side of the rubber is going to be rubbing up hard against the, um, the metal there. So you just want to grease up all the rubbers as you put them in. This is pretty much how it's going to sit. I'm going to take this top bolt out and feed it through the top. There's the center bolt here which goes into the stock mount on the front side. So pretty much you just lift out the old springs. You can do it while it's in the air, you can do it while it's on the ground. Just make sure you do one side at a time. Pull the U-bolts off, drop these springs in, do up the nuts and um, well it sounds easy. We'll see how we go with that. And then the only last thing is putting the shocks on which same setup as the front. ARAR remote resi but they're not sort of external these are mounted to the existing shot but they're still adjustable so they just go straight in there you're gonna have a fun time adjusting these when they're up high in there <laughs> anyway we'll see how we go with that as well Okay, small change of plans. That mount there that we've put the hoist on is actually right up onto where the leaf spring is. So we're lowering it down and we're gonna use a jack underneath the, uh, a different part of the chassis around here. And use that jack to take this stand out so we can pull the leaf out. Wow! Right, that's about the rear all done. We've got the leafs in now. At the same time we put these shocks in, they're pretty simple, just a bolt at the bottom, a bolt at the top. As I mentioned, these resis are just connected to them on the back. Um, also, there were some extended brake lines that were supplied in this kit as well, so I whacked them on while I was under here. Pretty simple thing to do, a couple of 10 mil bolts and um, hook them back in there. Uh, the only last thing we've done back here is grease everything up. We went back and greased the front end as well, so all the upper control arms, um, ball joints get greased up, even these shackles on the back end are greased up. Um, so everything's lubricated. Pretty much get it back on the ground now, see what the ride height's sitting at, and then it's going to be heading to the shop. Probably go down the boys at Malaga Suspension to get them to tune up all the suspension, get the height right, a wheel alignment, and be ready for the tracks. Ah! Well, I'm sitting here chewing on a cable tie, 
I was just about getting ready to bleed the brakes because we've done the brake lines. I just wanted to show you quickly this tool from Tool Pro. They, um, you can probably relate a lot of times when you bleed the brakes, you've got your mate pumping the brake and you're sitting there, you know, letting the juice come out, all that. But what they've come up with is this device here, which means you can bleed your brakes with only one person. So there's two settings, there's a suck and a blow. So when you have it on this in, well, it's called in and out. So when it's in, it sucks fluid in and you just fill up your reservoir suck the fluid through and it gets all the bubbles out and then if you go on the out setting you can actually blow air into it if you actually want to clear a brake line out if you're going to remove it or change it or there's a blockage in there you can blow it through so just a quick little device there that i picked up from i think it was from super cheap and um easiest way to do me brakes from now on i'll tell you what that's not full lock yet so just before you go for a test drive on the main road, you just want to click the steering lock to lock to make sure it's not hitting anything and clearances are true. This hit something at pace. <laughs> down, down the curb. Oh, so much better. Feels good. You can see at the moment that the back end is sitting a lot higher than the front end. That's because we were setting the spring height on the front and we can only guess what it needed to be. I think it was time to head back to the shop, sort out the height and get a wheel alignment as well. Have it guys that is the installation of the four inch lift kit from superior engineering this will go in any ifs uh, vehicle so as i mentioned at the start if you've got any hilux or amrock or dmax or anything like that hopefully you picked something out from this video and if you like what you saw make sure you hit subscribe also join me on my patreon page it's where you get the most up-to-date stuff behind the scenes and future access to uploads i'll drop the description and link below also if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt there's a link in the description below for that as well over on my website and i'll see you in the next video guys take it easy peace If you found this video inspirational, you should most certainly click the subscribe button. Catch me on Facebook or Instagram for the latest content as well, before this video finishes.